Hello and welcome to today's video guys. In this video today, we'll be talking about a very important topic from the new format of the PMP exam which is Servant Leadership. Servant Leadership is a high priority topic as per the new format of the PMP exam and you can expect quite a few questions directly from Servant Leadership or at least with the concepts associated with Servant Leadership in your PMP exam. So let's start by first understanding the topic of servant leadership and then we'll be solving some PMP style questions as well. So watch this video till the end. So when we talk of servant leadership guys, we need to understand some very specific traits or characteristics of a servant leader. So let's see what is meant by that. Now what you see on the screen guys are the key traits a servant leader needs to exhibit. Let's go through them one by one and understand a bit more detail for each of those traits. And along the way we'll see some examples of leaders around the world who had been true servant leaders. Enable not direct. A servant leader does not direct a team on how to do a task or how to execute a project. He always enables the team with correct thought process, correct staffing, correct resources, correct training so that the team is self-sufficient to execute a project. The goal of a servant leader is to build self-sufficient teams which functions independently regardless the physical presence of the leader. So you will never see a project manager who is a true servant leader attending a lot of meetings or telling people what to do. He will always staff his team with the right people with the right capabilities for project execution. And he is there to break any barriers or challenges which the team finds on its way. Coach, not teach. A servant leader is more of a coach than of a teacher. The difference between a coach and a teacher is a coach focuses on experiential learning and self reflection rather than a teacher who focuses on learning from the book and providing direct feedback. For example, if you are learning a new subject, a teacher will help you first to learn the subject by taking direct one-to-one -one sessions. It's like what happens in the college or university lectures, right? But a coach will ask you to read up a new subject first and then discuss and correct your understanding about that subject and direct you towards further reading. Remember, a coach does not spoon feed. Empower, not lead. A servant leader always focuses on empowering the team with the right tools in their arsenal to succeed. A project manager who is a servant leader may possess a very strong decision making ability, but you will never see him or her taking a decision by himself and then shoving it down the throat of the team. A servant leader will always encourage open discussions within a team to arrive at a decision after listening to everyone's point of view. He will always try to empower the team to take better decisions by organizing the right training for them or getting the right people with relevant experience on board the team. So you'll never see a servant leader saying, we do this since I know it's the best for the team. Okay? He will always start with the question, okay team, Considering the current situation, what do you think is best for us? Seek to understand. A servant leader is never opinionated and he or she always seeks to understand a problem first before arriving at a solution or a judgment. For example, if a particular team member is not performing in a project, a servant leader should first try to understand why that person is underperforming. Is it a gap in training? Is it a gap in motivation? Is it a gap in fit between the person's ability and the role? Is there any problem with the person's family? And so on. Remember that the focus of a servant leader is to understand the root cause of a problem before arriving at a solution. Build conditions for team success. A servant leader always focuses on breaking barriers and challenges in the path of a team's success and provide them the right condition to succeed. For example, Let's take a situation where in a project a critical approval is pending with the government authorities. It is stuck in the red tape of bureaucracy. Now is the time a servant leader should work towards identifying the right channels, influencing and talking to the right people, creating any influence from lobbyists if required to get the approval on time. Once that's done, 
the team will take care of the project team success defines leader success take it this way guys if a team succeeds it's the success of the servant leader but if a team fails it's because the servant leader has failed so a person who is a true servant leader will never portray himself as a top performer in front of his boss if the team is not performing for example when it comes to rating and promotions in an organization a true servant leader should always project the team in the best limelight she will not put herself as a contender for promotion and progression if the team members are deprived of the required recognition you will never see a servant leader say i made the project a success she will always say the project is a success because of the team so remember these six traits of a servant leader guys you'll be able to answer a lot of questions in the pmp exam correctly if you really understand what each of these traits mean for a servant leader if you are liking this video guys and if you feel that it is valuable for your pmp preparation make sure you press that like button and subscribe to my channel also don't forget to press the bell notification to never miss an update from my side on youtube now since we have understood what is meant by servant leadership and what are the key characteristic features of a servant leader let's try and solve a pmp style question now from the topic of servant leadership okay so question number 1 guys pause the video read the question carefully and try to answer it before moving forward this is a question of medium to high level of difficulty and you can expect quite a few questions like this in your pmp exam okay so answer it carefully okay so we will start by studying the answer choices remember that it is very important to study each of the options very carefully and you need to reject an option only on solid grounds okay never reject an option just because it doesn't feel right or it just doesn't seem right or sound right to you okay so let's start option number 1 what it's essentially telling you is that you decide for your team and roll it out accordingly okay this as we learned is not a servant leadership behavior guys right a servant leader never decides for the team and rolls it out by himself okay hence this option is a wrong option moving on option number 2 now this can be the correct answer guys okay in the end you may argue that it is important to keep your top level staff and managers happy okay but there is a major problem which you can face if you take this strategy okay by doing this you can make your top level staff happy but you will lose your ground level employees like your junior level technicians and 3d modeling technicians okay now this is what a servant leader doesn't want okay it will cause a lot of disharmony with the team and it will make your project a lot more difficult to handle okay so option number 2 is also a wrong option okay let's go to option number 3 now this seems fairly a good option because it's saying that you call a meeting with the entire team explain them the situation communicate the budget constraints align with them the success criteria and then you ask the team to come up with the nominations and proposal so so overall it captures a lot of dimensions of a good servant leader okay so you are not deciding for your team and you are making the team enable to take a decision and be accountable for it as well okay so let's park this option for a while okay moving on option number 4 go back to your management and ask for more travel funding this is not a correct option guys because you can't go back to your management and ask for extra funding okay for travel and it's not a sign of a good leader or a good servant leader that you are not able to manage with the funds that you are having and you want to send as many people as possible okay so that's not a good way to work a project or a benchmarking project okay you need to be very choiceful of who to send and what each of those individuals would be bringing the value on table okay so this option is also a wrong option so that means the correct answer to this question is option number 3 Now that's quite off beat right and that's something very new as per the current format of the PMP exam expect a lot of questions like this guys okay and now let's solve another question from the topic of servant leadership pause the video try to answer the question before moving forward question number 2 guys okay so we'll start solving the question 
as step number one we need to remind ourselves that we will not reject any option without solid grounds okay so let's see that what each of the options are talking about okay option number one it's saying that Rowan can benchmark with other hospitals and learn from their experience. Now, in a way, it's good. And then he can roll out the same with his team for deployment. Okay. Now, here the strategy is very individualistic, guys. So, Rowan is doing the benchmarking with other hospitals, which is good. And then he is rolling out the same with his team for deployment. Now, this is something which you don't expect from a servant leader, right? A servant leader is always inclusive when it comes to decision making, right? So, this option is... A wrong option guys okay moving on option number two rover needs to involve his team of doctors nurses ethical and legal consultants to design a strategy and then benchmark the same with other trusts to identify gaps and improvements okay now this is a step ahead of option number one because what it's saying is before you do the benchmarking you involve your team of doctors nurses and ethical legal consultants now that way it's a bit more inclusive because it's essentially asking rowan to take inputs from all of his team members and then do the benchmarking to arrive at a correct strategy now this can be a right option guys let's hold this for a while and move to the other options option number three he should ask the trust for help let them provide guidelines for the patient confidentiality it makes sense because the trust is the primary stakeholder okay now this is a very close option guys okay now what it's essentially saying is you go to the trust ask for the help and let them provide guidelines because they are the primary stakeholders now this is where the option becomes wrong because the trust is not the primary stakeholder when it comes to patient confidentiality okay the patient is the primary stakeholder okay not the trust and also it doesn't take into account the inclusiveness of a servant leader that we discussed for option number two right so this option is also a wrong option option four rowan should study uk patients confidentiality guidelines and develop plan accordingly this can be rolled out to the team at a later stage again again it's on the similar lines guys that rowan is deciding for himself by studying some guidelines which may be correct but in the end he is not including his team in decision making okay so this is a behavior which you do not expect from a servant leader okay so this option is also a wrong option in the light of servant leadership so the correct answer to this question is option number two which talks about including the team for decision making and then come up with a strategy i hope this video was useful guys let me know in the comment section below what other topics as per the new format of the pmp exam you want me to cover in this channel thank you for watching today's video i wish you all the best for your pmp exam preparation and i'll see you again soon in another awesome video like this in this channel bye bye and have a nice day